Hello viewers, welcome back to Forza Motorsport 7. I felt like having a couple of races, S class and A class, where I feel most comfortable and will most likely get rammed the highest proportion of times. So Watkins Glen, this is the short circuit. One for my trusty Aston Martin V12 Zagato. Absolutely love this machine. Please do forgive the fact that I've left the ribbon thing on the edge of the circuit. Uh, I turned it on and forgot to turn it off and I kept forgetting to turn it off. If any of you watch my live streams you'll know that I always forget to change the settings before each race in, in regards to assists and whatever. So you just have to deal with it. So back chicane here, we're running to chicane. Viper and Ferrari ahead side by side. I'm going to capitalise am I on the exit? Yes I am. Sweep around the outside up into fourth. Then we've got this very long right hand, almost get punted in the rear end. Just about to survive. Good to be back in Forza 7. Yes, I do make a lot more GT Sport videos these days, but I will always serve my Forza, my hardcore Forza fans who are out there. And up the inside, the Viper comes. Uh, it, was a, it was a late move, only a nose alongside, and then a big punt into the final corner. And, well, an even bigger punt through the final corner. And I'm round, and I'm going to lose God knows how many places. Go way down now to 11th, now, now to 12th, possibly 13th. This other Aston Martin comes over the line and catches up, yes, briefly up down, uh, sorry, up into 13th, down to 13th. Back into 12th as this and Lotus goes all over, makes me turn one. Sweep by him, up into 11th. The comeback is on now. We can't be having that, we can't be having that. I can't remember that guy's game attack, but we're going to try to catch up with him and deal with him the right way. So Lamborghini slow through the S's up into 10th. The V12 Zagato here, a really, really good car for S-Class. Once it gets going, it really is very good in a straight line. A little bit tricky in acceleration zones. It does like to slide a little bit, so you do have to manage the throttle. But on the whole, a very strong car for S-Class. And I think you do need a lot of power in S-Class. You will get left behind on a lot of the circuits, even if there are, you know, just even a medium length straight that power is so so useful in most cases there aren't many tracks where you don't where you can get away with not having really much power at all so final turn it's all kicking off here and i just about get through try to trying to really judge what was going on there sometimes it's very difficult with uh fours and motor seven of course laying down smoke screens left right and center so it can be very difficult to really see what's going on ahead of you when people are deploying those smoke screens just about survived that scare up until tonight. Looking up the inside into the second part of the S's wasn't quite there. The guy makes a mistake though, and I think as a result of that kind of poke up the inside, I wasn't really going to go for it, but kind of forced him into a mistake and then just shove him wide on the exit for good measure. Into the chicane, up behind the XJ220 and the Ferrari. Do excuse the banging in the background of my neighbour getting a bit angry with some tools. So looking around the outside of the Ferrari, just about getting it done. Gives him space, he comes across, the contact, front to rear, Corvette coming back with good straight line speed. Then going to go around the outside, Ferrari shoves him a little bit wider. He can't quite get the job done. Final turn now, uh, final turn on the circuit. Up to eighth place. So the comeback has, well, has been mediocre thus far, although it's only half of the race done. And we'll still definitely get a couple more positions. Breaking about 300 ball. Ferrari comes back for a move, bit of contact. I'm going to use that contact as an excuse to run very wide, as he does too. I don't think that move was ever quite going to work. I did go quite late on the brakes. Through the S's, a hint of a lift. Just about running the full track width on the way out. Crucial track width there because you're onto this very long straight. And you want to, of course, make the most of the strength of the car, which in this case is the straight line speed. Contact up ahead, so three cars involved. Porsche very wide indeed. It's going to come back on. I'm going to have to slow down slightly on the exit to deal with that. We go easily sailing by into my favourite position. Now then, into the penultimate turn up behind the Viper and the Jaguar. We've kind of followed the Jaguar through the pack thus far. Can we actually overhaul him? 
and actually here's the Viper who punted me on lap one. And we're, gonna, we're gonna kind of catch up to him at the beginning of lap five. Two laps left to go. Viper up the inside of the Jag. Scruffy move, it gets the job done. The Jaguar now very slow off the turn. I'm gonna try to look for a move. It's not really always possible into the S's. Not always the best overtaking opportunity. I'm gonna save myself for a good exit and again make the most of the straight line speed of this Aston Martin. Where's the Viper going? He's going to stay right this time and he's not actually going to punt me off. So I think he got angry because the, the move at the second to last corner, I kind of pinched him, but then he, he had like a noose alongside. It was never going to work anyway. And then I braked early on him. Well, I braked when I had to brake and then he went to the back of me, but who cares? I'm back past him now. So punt me all you like. I'll catch back up to you and show you just how bad you are. Into the second to last turn on lap number five. Back into fourth, third place. In fact, well, the top three are all quite far ahead now. That, uh, that gap really opening up as a result of the anarchy earlier on. And well, that was pretty much the race. So, uh, settling for fourth place, I couldn't really do much more than that. And randomly, a close and clean start at bar first. Look at this. Come through the first corner and don't get murdered. Don't get sent to the Shadow Realm. That's nice. And speaking of Shadow Realm, top one Shadow Realm entries of the week. Here we are, VIR. And this guy just forgets that there's a corner. And well, there we go. And that's our top one Shadow Realm entry of the week. Now, staying at VIR, going for an A class race this time, going in the good old Chevy. Let's see what we can do here then. Tight twisty circuit. I've gone for the big, beefy boy. Plenty of power, not the best handling, but do like a challenge. Into the first corner, very tight hairpin. There's one contact. In we go. There's the second, and there's the third. Very nice. End up in the wall. So it looked like a promising start. Down to 14th and last. So again, similar story developing here. You can see the theme of the video. Getting punted off on lap one and then trying to make a big comeback through the field. Just the typical falls away. A couple of people wide here. Nice 90 degree rejoin. Luckily, he ghosted out, so it didn't really matter at all. Around the outside, this guy and this guy very slow off the turn. Up into eighth already. It's only been about a third of a lap, about half a lap now. Contact with the Porsche up into seventh. Up now behind the Lotus. To A class. This used to be my absolute favourite class back in, let's say, Forza 4. A class was the best class. Forza 6 moved more up into S class. I, th I love both classes kind of equally though. I, I would say kind of gravitate more towards S class, but I, I love both, love playing both. Away off the turn, five laps here, short circuit. VIR of course always coming up in the boat. I don't mind VIR, it's just you don't want to play it every bloody time. Now coming down, looking for the end of that tarmac runoff on the left hand side, that's pretty much your breaking point. And actually turned out to be just about okay, maybe a little bit early could break a tiny bit later I think. So actually catching up to I think the guy punting me off at turn one, the the white uh, BMW there sitting in uh, fifth up behind the Lotus. He goes in very hot into this turn, very misleading uh, corner as you go over the crest. So you have to kind of judge your breaking point a little bit differently on that one. And he's taking a really weird line all over the grass, maybe feeling a bit nervous. The Super GT effect of this big boy car right behind him in his rear view mirror. So we pass him up into sixth, big group of three ahead, so definitely a shot on fifth, fourth, third at this point, top two a little bit further round, but still a long race to go here. Into oak tree corner where there is no longer an oak tree. Italian goes for the move, it's not clean at all, he's punting him round, he's just pushing him along at 90 degrees. Porsche comes back up the inside and then the BMW here shifts to pushing the Porsche instead. So just your typical day here really. Past these guys quite convincingly, this car, tons of power, easily up the inside. You see that big gap there to the white, the, uh, white BMW? Should be a problem here, coming into uh, turn one. But the uh, the Swede here comes from the move, okay, fair enough. And then the Italian, again, a repeat of, of lap one, way too late on the brakes, into the side of me. And obviously this, this spells disaster for this guy, because I've had, you know, you can only really have enough of that in one day before someone needs to be sent to the Shadow Realm. So here we go, the comeback is on. In fact, he's only here and it, 
And on, on lap one, I mean, he caught up with him quite quickly. So this shouldn't take too long to send this guy to the Shadow Realm. He might as well enjoy his last minute on Earth as a mere mortal here before he gets sent away. So coming round towards this fast uh, left kick. Really difficult corner this one. You do have to turn your current really early. There's a big tire on the, on the, edge, on the sort of apex though, which can really mess up your dreams if you get it wrong. So then, I've definitely got the straight line speed here against these two cars up ahead. And we're going to capitalise on that down this long straight here. Across the start finish line to go on to lap number four. And this is where he can say goodbye for, for his last seconds on this earth. So off you go, mate. We can see him. Well, we won't see him ever again. He can join that guy who joined the uh, Shadow Realm earlier in the video. Actually, that's our new top entry, top one entry of the week. Is that is that one there? And he's actually gone. I think he's he's completely disappeared. I actually don't know where he went. There was like a massive tire wall in between us, and I think I sent him to the other side. Uh, the other side being, of course, the Shadow Realm. Up to second now. So this guy going very very deep having a bit of an accident on his own, it seems. So now the uh, the Swede in the Porsche up ahead is in the lead of the race. So we actually have a battle on our hands for first place somehow. So this is a possible last to first challenge. So we have one lap left to go, plus these last two corners. Porsche kicking up some dust on the apex of the left kink, up into Oak Tree Corner. Kind of getting this one wrong most times. This car, it does feel a little bit clumsy through these uh, tighter corners but you kind of just got to tame that as much as you can and then unleash the power on the straights don't overdrive the car when, when it really can't do it which is well on all of the tight corners and there's a lot of them around here so breaking again at the end of that tarmac we're going to go deep around the first bit which is really this is a good line actually you can cut back for a second apex pretty much level with that tire wall on the inside and you can get more power out into this medium length middle straight here and then over the crest break into the bottom of that little hill and clip all these apexes here in fact use a little bit of grass for good measure to kind of hook you around we're definitely catching up with the Porsche although we're running out of time here to salvage a race victory although second is a, is a good result from where we were at the beginning of, of the race facing the tyre wall at turn one lap one so just a couple of corners left to go. This guy was pretty good through here. I think that Porsche is pretty much rooted, as you probably expect from a Porsche. Good handling. Up into the final turn of the race. And it's not quite going to be there, although I do have a run to the line with the superior power. It is quite a short run to the finish line, though, as the, the finish line just comes across here, not too far into the straight. And it's going to be a second. Not too bad a result, though. Pretty pleased with that. Here's a quick recap of this S-Class race at... Suzuka, actually a fairly decent start here, actually not too bad, um, one guy does go wide at the, at the front of the pack there, but for the rest of us here, it seems okay, can't quite comment on the people behind, can't hear much clanging, I did murder that guy, coming through Dunlop, slow down to let him back past later on in that lap, and then this was quite a cool moment, this guy just spinning wide the Lotus, and then down the main straight, I've obviously chosen some sort of power build here, just scintillating move through the center of everyone from fifth to first look at that straight through the middle threading the needle nicely don't get sucked off here luckily the astro doesn't quite have the sucking power of Gran Turismo Sport to survive this time Jaguar trying to go around the outside doesn't quite get the job done and keep second place at the end of the race keeping my call here this car really strong on the straights quite difficult to handle through the through the edges twisted corners just about get the job done into the final corner though one more corner left to go we've got that old orange proximity arrow looking for the move Jaguar behind doesn't quite go for it uh, just about rebuff his attempts to take second and I'm going to keep the second so a decent result there and we move to a, a, a nice race here at Road Atlanta Road Atlanta is a really cool circuit starting mid-pack and once again the Aston Martin B12 Zagar so one of my favourites for S class Sweeping around the outside, a couple of guys wide, and uh, we, we make the most of that. Looking up the inside of the Selene S7, doesn't quite happen. And through here, look at this, this is really good. The, the Cayman, sorry, the Porsche Carrera on the inside, uh, through, through the kink. And we both give each other space, and there's no contact at all. That's, re that's really good racing, don't always get that. McLaren F1 here, again, 
side by side, no contact involved. Celine very wide, I've just moved left there to give the McLaren a little bit more space as the Celine was rejoining. Solid start here, up into seven. Uh, just avoiding the contact. Sometimes it's best just, you know, really don't focus on attacking, just focus on getting through unscathed, and that often is the right approach to take. So caution, you know? People people uh, say I'm too cautious, but I think a lot of the time that does pay dividends. Up behind the forward RS200 here, I'm not sure which way he's going to go. I'm going to, defend, uh, I'm going to look right, he's going to defend right, and then defend left, and just about squeeze through the gap on the inside. Peggy, 80. Off the circuit, you saw nothing there. He's going to come up the hill through the S's, over the crest, back down the hill on the other side into the final corner, dipping two wheels into the excess tarmac on the left hand side, just about avoid contact through the turn. We've got a bit, bit of luck today actually on our side. It seems like we've avoided a fair few bits of contact, which could have obviously ended a lot worse than how it did. So sometimes, uh, sometimes we, we do focus on when we get bad luck, you know, when you're involved in contact, but sometimes you've got to think. That could have easily ended very badly, so sometimes you get a bit of luck that doesn't quite uh, turn out to be so bad. Although a lot of the time it's kind of scanning ahead, what's, what's happening here, you just got to kind of lift off the accelerator and just kind of judge the moment. And then, well, I mean, lifting off the accelerator, you give yourself a little bit more time to react. So I think that kind of just happened there. So up into fourth, trying to catch up with the trio at the front here. So once again, the Jaguar of uh, Patrick KSE in third place and try to reel him in. At this pace here, you see just how fast I was going down that straight. At least uh, at least the speed of light, but it seems like the guys ahead also went the speed of light and the gap has stayed the same. So then over the hill, final turn, love this final corner here. A little bit of a dip here, halfway through that corner, pretty much on the apex. Kind of got to watch out for that, kind of unsettles the car if you get on the throttle too early. Uh, kind of sends you wide. Into turn one. Really hooking up that Apex nicely, powering out to the outside. Fast left and then right kick coming up. Kind of dip two wheels onto that curb at least, and then onto the curb on the Apex of the kick. Keep to the left hand side, powering down the hill and up to the S's. This is a crucial corner here, so always dipping two wheels onto the grass. It gives you kind of a better run onto this uh, medium length back straight. And of course, you've got the very long back straight, which is also very crucial, which is why I chose this car. You do often get people go for the handling around the circuit, but I often do I, I often do think that you need the, the top end for this very long straight. I do think that power does often trump many things in this game. So when you uh, you have the fast cars in a straight line, just, just use that and just really nurse the car through the corners. And that's Juno DT there in the Exomotive. The absolute animal of a car. Couldn't quite control it through the apex of the final chicane. He's doing well to lead that race. That car is an absolute animal. He's got so much torque. He just wants to spin pretty much on every corner now that, uh, with that traction control. So we actually have a battle on our hands here. We've actually managed to catch up with the battle for first. Although first might be a tall order. Second place is definitely achievable here. We've been slowly reeling him in by about half a second a lap, I think, about this rate, at this uh, at this race so far. So I should be quicker. And I do think I have the superior top end. So let's see if I can make the most of that. So ideally here, I could go for the move. He's going to cover the right-hand side and go left. What I'm trying to do here is really just put him out of position to make sure that he doesn't get a good run onto this back straight and then I can uh, just get, get past him. So he's, he's going to have to go in very narrow there, which is going to compromise his exit. So. I should be able to get past him here with a superior top end, just going to the right hand side, covers the middle of the middle of the road, and we go through up into second. But we do have the chicane to come up and another corner after that. So it could still change. You don't want to bottle it now and miss your breaking point. Just break in before you reach the bottom of that hill. Quite a hard one to judge. On the exit, we've got it nicely done over the crest for the final time. We're going to finish second. It was a good race, actually. Didn't mind that one. And uh, a bit of luck on our side to avoid all the contact on lap one. But also some respect actually shown from other drivers. So good stuff on the whole there. So, there you go. I do hope you enjoyed the video as always, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and if you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy, always consider hitting the like button. Oh, there we go. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.